Hi, my name is Alan Pickett. I am head chef at Lost London. Today we're celebrating the start of the partridge season, which starts at the beginning of September to the end of January. We've had some amazing red leg partridge from Curtis Pitts in Devon. They arrived yesterday, they're phenomenal, and I can't wait to cook them. We pride ourselves on top quality produce, and the red leg partridge fit that bill perfectly. The red leg partridge dish that I cooked today was a roast red leg partridge with savoy cabbage, glazed heritage carrots, and I managed to find some uh, elderberries recently, which I pickled, and I've managed to use them in the sauce. I'm a fan of roasting a red leg partridge with the legs on. I find it sets the legs and it gives them a better shape. So when you actually uh, French trim them and put them onto the plate, they have a much, much better form. By French trimming, I mean, with you, when you have the leg, uh, what you're doing is just um, trimming the meat off from the largest bone in the leg, the actual uh, drumstick, so to speak. And you're French trimming that meat off so you can show the leg to the customer. And what I would imagine the customer does is pick the leg up and eat the meat off the bone like that. And normally you serve a finger bowl with lemon in there as well. I love cooking with partridge. One of the reasons being it's so seasonal and also you get to use your fingers. We start with the butchery of the bird. So that means removing all of the excess feathers. Um, we tie the bird up as well, which then, while roasting, gives it that really nice shape. Once we've tied it, we blowtorch the feathers off, if there's any loose ones there, um, and then put some thyme stalks into the cavity. So while the bird is cooking, it infuses with lovely wild thyme. Then we cook the cabbage um, in a little bit of water and butter and seasoning. And then the carrots are already cooked, so all we're doing on service is just reheating them. And a little bit of water and butter again and seasoning. So all of those ingredients come together fantastically onto the plate. The sauce that we have is a red wine jus and then it's just finished with elderberries and a little bit of the pickling vinegar and uh, it's lied with butter. And lied means to thicken with butter. I'm lucky enough to live in Red Hill in Surrey, um, which are unbeknownst to me is that we have an abundance of berries that we can forage. And uh, recently I was playing in a, in a park with my two youngest children and I saw some elderberries hanging there, ready for picking. So went home, got the secateurs, came back, foraged them, brought them into work, and then pickled them. And they've come into this dish, which is amazing. One of the memories I have is making game chips. And Chris used to have us hand slicing these potatoes. But the, the wonderful thing now is we have a potato called uh, Chips Choice Potato, which has the right balance of starch, what we do is we peel the potato, we slice it on the mandolin. Once it's sliced, we just wash the potato off just to try and release some more of that potato starch. And then we deep fry the slices at about 165 degrees centigrade. And they'll go a beautiful golden brown color. Once they're cooked and they're really crispy, and that's the, the wonderful thing about Chips Choice, is it will go crispy and you won't have any soggy, soggy uh, chips there. Pull them out, drain them off, season them with malt and sea salt, and there you have also an amazing bar snack as well. Cooking, cooking partridges really reminds me of one of my first uh, restaurants in London, Orrery with Chris Kell. Uh, we used to cook about 15 to 20 partridges a day there, and it's a real skill uh, because they have obviously the same cooking time, but when you've got various different orders coming in, have to try and keep up uh, and all of that work the butchery is done during service um, so I had a, a, an amazing time working with Chris but it also taught me so much about the welfare of birds how you look after them uh, when they enter the building what you have to do and um, yeah I've got really really fond memories as chefs we tend to say what grows together goes together and this time of year, it's absolutely phenomenal for the produce that a chef sees.